Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to look at some amazing historic computers at the National Museum of Computing. This is located at Bletchley Park in the United Kingdom, which during World War II was a top secret code breaking facility. Here we have Colossus, the world's first electronic computer. The machine was designed and built by a man called Tommy Flowers, with the prototype Mark I Colossus entering service in February 1944. A Mark II Colossus was then developed, with the first of these put into operation in June 1944. In total, by the end of the war, ten Colossus computers were being used by the codebreakers at Bletchley Park. While Colossus is programmable, it's not a general purpose computer. Rather, it was developed solely to help decipher encrypted German high command messages. Specifically, Colossus was used to determine the settings of the Lorenz encryption machine that the Germans used to scramble each secret communication. As you can see, Colossus is based on vacuum tube or thermionic valve technology, with the Mark I machine having about 1600 vacuum tubes and the Mark II about 2,500. To prevent these notoriously delicate components from blowing, it's important that they're never turned off. Colossus has no RAM or other form of electronic or magnetic memory. Instead, it's fed data from a continuous loop of punched paper tape that circulates around this bedstead at the end of the machine. A paper tape can contain up to 25,000 5-bit characters and travels at up to 27 miles an hour. Amazingly, the whole thing holds together and allows Colossus to process up to 5,000 characters a second. Colossus is programmed by manually setting the positions of the rows of switches and plugs that we see on several of its panels. So, unlike a modern computer, Colossus has no operating system and cannot run high-level programming languages. Because it's not a general purpose computer, Colossus also only runs the specific application for which it was built, with its switches and plugs being used to select desired algorithms and other programmable parameters. While Colossus has lights to indicate operation, it does not have a monitor-style display. Rather, final output is directed to this electric typewriter. The specific hardware we're looking at here is a rebuild of a Colossus Mark II, constructed by a team led by Tony Sale between 1994 and 2007. This fully working computer now stands in exactly the same location in Bletchley Park as the original Colossus 9. It really is an amazing machine to behold and a recreation that makes you appreciate the extraordinary achievements of computing's early pioneers. The noise it makes is also hypnotic and you can almost feel the mechanical pulse of Colossus resonating out from the past and deep into our computing future. While the Colossus computer we were just looking at is a reconstruction, here we have the world's oldest original working digital computer. When it was first built, it was known as the Harwell Decatron, as it was made at the Atomic Energy Research Establishment in Harwell and used 828 Decatron counting tubes for program and data storage. This enormous machine was built to automate tedious mathematical work. Its design also prioritised simplicity, reliability and unattended operation over pure computational speed. In practice, this resulted in a computer that's not much faster than a skilled mathematician in performing calculations, but which does not get tired and which can work relentlessly for long periods. As we look ahead to the 2020s and the mass automation of many jobs by artificial intelligence, it's interesting to reflect that this is where the trend for mental automation started. The Harwell Decatron first ran in 1951, entered service in 1952 and was used in Harwell until 1957. It was then offered as a prize in a competition and won by an educational establishment in Wolverhampton. 
Here, it became known as the Witch, or Wolverhampton Instrument for Teaching Computation from Harwell, and remained in use until 1973. Having been disassembled and kept in storage, in 2009 the machine was delivered to the National Museum of Computing for restoration, where it was first rebooted in November 2012. To add to their collection, the National Museum of Computing is rebuilding a working replica of the EDSAC, or Electronic Delay Storage Automatic Calculator. This is due to be completed in spring 2018, but is already very large and very impressive. As somebody working on the project told me, this is a computer where you can walk inside the CPU. The final reconstructed EDSAC will have about 140 shelves of valve-based electronics supported across 12 racks and will weigh about 2 tonnes. With about 1,000 words or roughly 3 kilobytes of memory, the machine will be able to process about 650 instructions a second. The original EDSAC was designed in 1947 and ran its first programme in May 1949 at its home in the Cambridge University Mathematical Laboratory. The machine is important because it was the first computer constructed for general use by people who had not built it. EDSAC remained in operation until July 1958 and across its nine years of service proved invaluable to many Cambridge scientists and engineers. Three of these even won a Nobel Prize for work that depended on EDSAC calculations. Bringing us closer to the present day, this is an ICL 2966 mainframe. And so is this, and so is this. This quite enormous machine fills a significant proportion of the museum's large systems gallery and was constructed somewhere between 1985 and 1987. Its manufacturer was ICL, or International Computers Limited, which between 1968 and 2002 was a very large British computing company. Of the 33 cabinets on display, five house the processor, while 20 are exchangeable hard drives that provide the machine with its storage. The plastic containers you can see on top of several units are used to hold disks removed from the drives. The large containers house platters providing 200 megabytes of storage, while the smaller ones contain 80 megabytes. The ICL 2966 machine was used by the Tarmac Construction Company until 1999, when it was finally decommissioned because it was expected to fail as a result of the Y2K problem or Millennium Bug. For anybody with an interest in computing, the National Museum of Computing is an amazing place to visit. In the modern world, it's far too easy to forget how different early computers were from the computers we enjoy today, and this place provides a powerful reminder of the very beginnings of computing. Now, in addition to all the large systems we see here, things like the Colossus and the EDSAC and the Witch and this extraordinarily large ICL mainframe, the museum's also got lots of other exhibits. It's got these amazing thermionic valves. It's got these extraordinarily large hard disk platters that you probably spotted earlier. And it's also got lots of early PCs. So many, in fact, I'm going to cover them separately in another video. But now that's it for this time. If you've enjoyed this video, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.